So, are we doing uh, geometry today? Yep. Okay. You don't have any algebra you need to talk about or anything? No. Are you, are you covering uh, statistics and probability right now? Um, yeah. Because every, no. everybody seems to be doing that. No matter whether you're in, well, maybe not Algebra 1, but I don't think we're doing not, that, actually. believe it or not, it doesn't matter whether you're in Algebra 2 or Pre-Calc, they tend to go through the subject material at the same time, just one does it a little more complicated than the other. I don't think. Sorry, what was that? Oh, that's okay. No, nothing. So, let's right. look at number 20. What is the length in feet of a ladder that is 24 feet up a wall and its base is 18 feet? In other words, here's the ladder. Okay. Um. Let me give you a hint on problems like this. Look and see if you see a 3-4-5 triangle. This is a right angle because it's a wall. Is this a 3-4-5 triangle? Yes. Yeah, it is. I can like yeah. six into yeah. this three times, six into that four times. So what we're looking at is a three, four, five triangle that's a multiple of six. So what is this? Time? All right. 30. That's the easy way to do it. Now, obviously, you can only use that technique if you're looking at a three, four, five or a five, twelve, thirteen. That's the other one you want to memorize for right triangles is 5, 12, 13. 3, 4, 5 and 5, 12, 13 are your two lowest. There's nothing else okay. in between these. In other words, there's no 4, 7, 10 right triangles. And the two that they repeatedly give you on all tests and problems are 3, 4, 5s and 5, 12, 13s. Now, if it's not one of those two, then you have to apply the Pythagorean theorem. You know that, right? Yeah. Have we talked about the Pythagorean theorem, or is that something they've taught you in algebra? We've talked about it. We've talked about it? Okay. Whenever you have a right triangle, A, B, and C, no matter what the dimensions, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem right there. Notice that in our 3, 4, 5, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. Add those two together, you get 25 which is 5 squared. All right. Number 21. All right. Go Come up with an equation. What equation can we write? Um, well, it could be 180 equals no, hold on. 21, there's no numbers. It's just... Um, X is equal to what? How would I solve that? In order to solve for X, I have to come up with an equation that relates this side, this side, and that side. What's that? Wouldn't that be... Starting with 180, though? No. Where are you getting 180 from? Um, oh! Okay. Where, where are you getting 180 from the 
Number 20? Yeah. Okay. And 21 is this triangle here. All right. Sorry. That's okay. I just couldn't figure out where you were getting 180 from. So what equation can I write? Based on the Pythagorean uh, theorem. X squared plus X plus 2 squared. Well, the quantity X plus 2 squared Good. equals the quantity 2X minus 2 squared. That's the perfect way to verbalize. Quantity 2X minus 2 squared. Okay, so can we solve for X? Uh, yes. Okay, let's, what's the next step going to be? X squared plus, sorry, one second, let me minimize that. All right, X squared plus X squared plus 4. Mm, don't make that mistake. Um, what would you do then? Multiply that out. Foil it. That's x plus 2. Oh, plus yeah. X plus 2. All right. Um, plus 4x plus 4. There you go. And the other side? Equals, um, it would equal 2x, 4x squared, yeah. Then plus minus because both middle terms yeah. are going to be minus. And it's always, minus. It's always two times this times this. So this times this is four x. Two times that is eight x. Oh yeah. And what's the plus? And term? then plus four. So now what can I do real quickly? Um, you can combine all like terms. Well, you could just make it 2x squared. Okay, that's a good start. How about this 4? You can subtract from both sides okay. and they cancel each other. Get rid of that real quick. And now we've got this. Now what? How do we solve that algebraically? Um, you could divide all sides by 2x. Okay. Not a bad idea. Now what? And then you would uh, add 4x to both sides and subtract x squared to both sides to get 6x equals x squared. Now what? You would divide both sides by x? No. That's a very common mistake, one that I made for 30 years. What do we get if we divide both sides by x? Get 6 equals x, yeah. What about 0? Is 0 a solution? Um, no. Actually, it is. If you look at the equation I've written, x being 0 oh, yeah. works. Now, in real life, in this problem, we can't have a x equals 0 only because of that. But we don't really know that yet. The way to solve this is not to divide both sides by x. Because if x can possibly be 0, you lose that solution when you divide by x. So you've got to be a little careful about dividing both sides of an equation by a variable that might be 0. In other words, if this had x right. plus 1 instead of x. Well, now there's no, nothing wrong with x being 0. But okay. here's the way to solve this. Instead of dividing both sides by x, let's move the 6x to the right side. So oh, so you this. could, could kind of like complete the square. You don't even need to do that. This is real easy to solve. Factor an x out. Oh, yeah. Now, two numbers multiplied together that are equal to 0, I set each one to 0. So, 
x can either be 0 or x can be 6. That is the solution to that equation we wrote. However, when we look at this problem and we look over here, well, we can throw out that solution yeah. because we can see that x can't be 0. But like I said, if that happened to say x plus 1, you can't automatically throw out x equals 0 until you get to the end of the problem. So right. whenever you're solving a problem like that, move everything over and factor instead of dividing by the variable that might end up being 0. Because you'll notice that we would have lost it. That's a perfect example. If you divide by x, you get x equals 6. You don't see that other solution. All right. All right. Let's see. Next page. which is a new section. Quadrilaterals and poly. Quadrilateral is a any four-sided figure. That has straight lines. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah. You knew it better than I did. Okay. So anything that's four-sided is a quadrilateral. And a polygon is just anything that's multi-sided. It can be three-sided, four-sided, eight-sided, twelve-sided. Okay. Let's look at this problem here. If each of the small squares in the figure above has area one, what is the area of the shaded region? Um. Is that a 10 by 10 square? It is. All right. Um, it would be, would it be 59? Well, let's talk about how we would do it. The hard way to do it is just to count them up, right? Yeah. Okay, so that would be 10 plus 9 plus 8. So 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. That one right there. All right. What is that? 27, 34, 40... 9.55. So the area is going to be 55. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's 10 things in a diamond, or 10 in the middle right there. If, All right. if I wanted it to be 50, in this diagonal right here, only half of each of those squares would be shaded, right? Yeah. In other words, if I were to just shade half of those 10 squares right there, I would have exactly half of the total area because I would be looking at something that I had drawn a diagonal in like that. And what's the area there? Half. Okay. Well, I can see that I have an extra 10 half. That's where I get that extra 5. All right. 50 plus 10 half squares is what I have here. In other words, I know I've got 50 plus the other halves of each of these 10 squares. So that's a little quicker way to do it. Is rather than counting each one. That figure right there, what's X? Um, I'm not sure how to solve that, but based on what the 
image looks like. I'm going to say 85. Yeah, let's not do it that way. All right. Uh, I mean, good try. I don't that's blame what you. I thought. <laughs> if you were taking a test and you had to do it, that's the way you should do it. But there's a rule in geometry that says if I have a straight line and a line that connects, these two angles are supplementary. A oh, yeah. and B add to 180. So how can I do this so, problem? What's this angle right um, here? That would be 95. Oh, sorry. That's all right. No problem. And what's this angle right here? 120. And what do four sides or four angles of the quadrilateral have to add up to? 360. Okay. So we add up these three angles, subtract from 360, and we get 275. 360 minus 275. There you go. You were right on. 85. Ooh. All right. Usually they'll have a little note here saying, not drawn to scale. Yeah. And if it says that, then you would not be able to rule out 90 or 95. You can pretty much guess. That, that was a very educated guess because we can see it's not even a right angle. Well, there's only yeah. one answer on there that's less than a right angle. Um, let's go over another rule in geometry regarding polygons. What is the total number of angles in a five-sided figure? Five? Yeah. In other words, we just, we just talked about a quadrilateral. This is a quadrilateral. So the total sides adds up to 360. Here's the equation. N minus 2 times 180. That gives you the total number the total angles in any figure. How about a triangle? No matter Does this the... fit a triangle? Um, yeah. To fit a square? Would it? Yeah. Square is a quadrilateral, has four sides. Four minus two is two. Two times 180 is 360. That's the total number of the measurement of the angles of all four sides of any quadrilateral. So a five-sided figure would be 5 minus 2 times 180, or 540. 6 would be 720, and so forth. But they, they'll give you problems like, what's the total angles in a 20-sided figure? And then you kind of have to use this equation. All right. Okay, so this is a pretty good equation to memorize for you. And the way to memorize it is to always check it on a triangle and a quadrilateral. If you have it wrong, it probably won't work for those two. If All you right. have it right, it will always give you the correct answer for triangles and quadrilaterals, and then you'll know you probably have the right formula. Number three. All right, so in that case, three times a hundred and eighty is um Hold on. How many sides are on this figure? Five. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt you. So there's 540 degrees total in this figure. All right. What equation, so, what equation can I write? Um, 540 equals 180, which are sides, which are angles, B and C plus 130 plus 2x. Very good. Subtract that from both sides and you get 
230 equals 2x each. Yeah, x equals 115. Yeah. And notice that x is not 115 degrees. In other words, they All did right. not even come close to drawing this to scale. That looks like it's close to 115 degrees. But if you look at this one in my book, that looks like a 90 looks, degree angle. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So they really should have a little note here saying, figure not drawn to scale. Because clearly they've got that X, it has to be the same as that X, and yet they are not the same angles. So be careful about approximating from a figure. All right. Let's see. What is the ratio of triangle DEC the area of that triangle to the area of the full square? In that case, wouldn't it be um, a one to two ratio? Beautiful. Whenever you take any kind of a rectangle. A square is a rectangle. And if I try to draw a triangle in that thing, it always takes up half of the area. All right. And that's why the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Because the area of the rectangle is always the base times the height. So All right. Any triangle that I can put, including this triangle, takes up half of that rectangle. doesn't matter whether it's drawn like that. How you draw it, it takes up. In other words, we don't care where that point is. A point could be over there, it could be over here. That thing's going to take up half of the total area. Of that. Next page. Number five. Um. So we need to figure out how many square meters we got, don't we? Yeah. Okay. So. So the way I would do it is I would like kind of take the top half where where the bar is, kind of, and solve for that triangle, and then take the part sticking out and solve for that. Okay. Sorry, uh, rectangle. You're saying let's solve for this area. Yeah. What's the dimensions on that area? Four by twelve. Okay. So that's forty-eight. What are the dimensions on this area? Also four by twelve. So that's forty-eight. So we have ninety-six square meters. And that would make a hundred and ninety-two dollars if it's two bucks each. Very good. So, 20, wouldn't we have to find out, find out the square root of 20 in order to solve for that? If the total area is 20 and there are oh, five the total equal squares, area. what's the area of each one? Sorry, two by two. I, wasn't, I didn't read it right. I thought each square had an area of 20. Okay, so there's five of those. What's the perimeter of this figure? It would be 
24. Good. That was fast. That was cool. Yeah, because you're only taking three sides of each square, right? Yeah, and you don't, you don't count out. that side. So you're taking the outside three sides of each square. So six times four, 24. Wow, they only had two problems on oh no, they, they huh. only had two problems on that whole page. That was basic. Now we get into intermediate. And that's a good place to stop. That's it. All right. I'll make a note and we can pick up from this problem next time. Okay. okay. All right, David. I'll talk to you next week. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. You're welcome.